Hi guys, welcome back to Oily Skin Diaries week day four. Every single day this week I am testing out a new foundation on my oily skin. I will link to the previous reviews down below. Today we're gonna to be testing out a new foundation from Revlon. It has been out for a little while, but I have yet to test it. And it is the Revlon Youth FX Fill and Blur Foundation. I also have the concealer here, so we're gonna be putting that to the test. This foundation isn't exactly marketed towards oily skin, but I am curious to see how it holds up because Revlon Color Stay is such a holy grail. I will have timestamps down below if you're just looking to see specific things during this review, but let's go ahead and get started. The Revlon Youth FX Foundation launched several months ago, and in the line there is a foundation, a concealer, along with a few primers. You're getting one full fluid ounce here in the bottle. It's a nice, convenient, squeezy tube format, and one full fluid ounce is the average size of a foundation. It does, however, cost a pretty penny. Of course, depending on wherever you live, United States and Canada, it's going to be a little bit different, and of course globally or around the world as well, but it seems to retail anywhere in between $15 to $25 which is hefty for sure. But in my opinion, and you can think differently, of course, but if you find a drugstore foundation that does work really, really well for you, holds up throughout the day, or has whatever kind of attributes that you look for in a foundation, and it costs $20, that's still half the price of a foundation at Sephora. So I'm not saying that the drugstore should get any more expensive by any means, but if you do find something you love, that is something to keep in mind. That being said, I'm not totally sure how well this is gonna do on my oily skin. It seems to be marketed for more mature skin. It says it's hydrating and lightweight, and also it's going to help blur any lines, uh, wrinkles, and of course any pores on your skin. So I will be able to put kind of the pore thing to the test. I don't have a major pore issue, but I'll be able to take a look. There are 12 shades in the range, which isn't a huge range, but it does seem to go from quite light to quite deep. I haven't actually seen every single shade in person, so I can't totally speak to that. Today, I'm gonna be wearing the shade 400 Caramel. I wear Toast in the color stay, which is a pretty good match for me. I think this may be slightly deep, but we'll put it to the test anyways. I'm gonna prime this half of my face to see if that makes any difference, keeping it more matte. And I'm gonna use both a brush and a beauty blender. I don't have a ton of experience with this foundation. I've worn it once or twice. I know it has a quite a thick formula, so let's go ahead and get into the application. If you can see on the back of my hand here, it has a really, really moussey, thick consistency. It's not liquidy at all. I'm gonna start, oh, this is really dark. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the Beauty Blender. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna like the Beauty Blender. No, okay. Moving on to brush. Um, it also says it's full coverage, which I have a lot of breakouts right now, so we'll see. It doesn't feel full coverage so far. Try and build it up a little bit. The thing I have with these kind of foundations, and it kind of reminds me of the L'Oreal Total Cover, is that they just, I don't know, moussey foundations for me aren't my favorite. I find they're just heavier, but they don't, they're heavier, but they don't give the coverage that I want because I don't like building them up because they're heavy. So definitely prefer the brush. I feel like maybe your hands could work nicely for this too because it might kind of heat up the foundation on your skin. And like I mentioned, this foundation isn't exactly marketed for me. So I can't really fault it if it all falls apart by the end of the day, but if you do have um, fine lines or wrinkles or more mature skin, let me know down below how this works for you because um, I can only give insight obviously for how it reacts to my face and kind of try and estimate how it may work for others. I've given the foundation some time to set while I did my brows, and it definitely still has a tacky feeling. There's still quite a bit of sheen here, but it does claim to be a hydrating foundation, so it is kind of doing what it said. I don't feel like it's doing any crazy blurring in comparison to another average foundation. Obviously, if I'm using something that's really, really matte, this does a better job to blur the skin. And it's at about a medium coverage. I wouldn't want to build it up more than this, just personal preference. I really don't enjoy a moussey feeling foundation. It's not that it feels really heavy or cakey on my skin or even looks it. It looks quite nice on the skin. I just don't like that initial application and I feel like if I put more moussiness over this, things may get a little bit messy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on the concealer now. So one thing I will say about the concealer is that this is medium deep. The deepest shade is deep and this is already borderline too light for me. So that is definite bummer. And I do like the kind of fluffy top on it. And it says it doesn't settle, but for me, I'm like, if you have fine lines, I think it's impossible not to get things settling. I don't know, maybe I'm doing something horribly wrong, but it does seem to have nice coverage. I have worn this a few times. I'm just gonna do one, one eye and we can kind of compare. 
I do think that this looks really good though. I find sometimes the drugstore concealers, they can look really good and then when you go to blend them out, they blend away, but this is not the case. And if you have problems with that, just let your concealer set for like a minute or two before you go in and blend it out. And I love my Real Techniques setting brush for this because I just kind of go in and blend the edges and then I'm not losing that um, coverage in the middle. So as you can see, this eye looks a lot more concealed and brightened. It says that it instantly erases dark circles, and I don't think that's the case. If you have dark circles, color correcting is the way to really get rid of that, and then you can put something like this over it that's more skin toned or a little bit brighter on your skin to really brighten and conceal a little bit more, but I do think that it looks really good. It kind of reminds me of the Maybelline one that has the same kind of a spongy top on it. Similar kind of it's a little bit more creamy than I would normally go for in a concealer, but it is nice. So far so good with this concealer. I do like the way that it looks. I am interested to see how it performs throughout the day because it does have a bit of a creamier texture. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my makeup now, take some flash photos, and we will chat about that. I have the rest of my makeup on and I think it looks great. The color match definitely looks better than when I initially applied it now that I've put on concealer and bronzed and all that good stuff. I think my skin looks nice and smooth. It feels lightweight. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. So we will see how it actually performs throughout the day. In photos, I forgot to mention it does have an SPF of 20. When I took a photo with just the foundation on here in my lighting, I thought it looked really good. It had a sheen to the skin, but still looks quite natural. Doesn't look cakey at all. Then when I brought in flash photo with just the foundation and the concealer I thought it looked good definitely a little bit light under the eyes but there wasn't really any major flashback from the foundation which is good for an SPF of 20 and then when I had all of my makeup on here in the lighting I think that it looks great as well so so far so good I am a little bit nervous to see how this is going to hold up throughout the day but I will check back with you midway it's time for my midday check-in here in some natural light and I gotta say I'm not loving this foundation. It just feels heavy on my skin and it just kind of feels a little bit itchy and I find I feel this way a lot about a lot of foundations that have the same kind of moussey texture so I'm gonna just powder my face a little bit but I don't know I honestly might not leave it on for that much longer. I think the color is a little bit dark too and I can't really fault the foundation because it's not like it claimed to be um good for oily skin, which is what I have, obviously. But uh, yeah, I'll go a few more hours and we'll see how this holds up. I'm gonna go ahead and call this foundation review quits. It's just not the kind of foundation that I personally like. If you like the L'Oreal Total Cover or kind of these moussey type of foundations, this may be good for you. I'm just gonna blot here. Um, I don't feel like the foundation really oxidized. Um, the coverage is nice. It didn't um, en enhance any pores or fine lines. I do like the concealer, but for me, I just, it's just not my kind of foundation. I'm gonna do a light powder here. So I can't really fault it because it, it's not really made for me, so fair enough. <laughs> um, I think if you have normal or dry skin, this may be something to try, or if you have more mature skin, which is who they're kind of targeting with this foundation. Uh, I do like the concealer though, so if you do like the Maybelline Age Rewind, you may like this concealer if you can find a shade that will match you. So I don't want to call this foundation a total fail because it does still look good on my skin. It is holding up even though it isn't for my skin type, but it's just something that I know that I'm not going to reach for as a personal preference. So I don't want you to think that I think that this foundation is complete crap. It's just crap for me personally. <laughs> uh, let me know if you have tried this foundation down below, and if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you tomorrow for day five. Bye.